Hey, what's up, you guys? This is literally the third time I'm trying this reading because somebody keeps going through my back gate and setting the dogs off. So third time's a charm. It's good to be back. I was in L.A. for almost a week at an animal welfare um, conference, so I have not been around. But um, thank you for tuning in, and please hit subscribe or like um, or share this video. Um, if you're interested in ordering a reading or uh, energy work, which is my real forte, um, you can do that on my website, which is redhoundreiki.com. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to get a reading for what we have to keep working on um, for the upcoming eclipse on the 27th. And I think it's an eclipse in Aquarius. And really what the eclipse energies ask us to do, they usually come in and bust a lot of stuff up, which is what's been happening in the last year or so. Um, so we're being asked, oh, there, there goes the gate again. At least the dogs are quiet. Um, so we're being asked to continue to release and um, especially karmic baggage so that we can make space and room to continue to raise our vibration to assist in um, uh, helping the planetary ascension process. I know that sounds super crazy, but that is truly what is happening. And if you have been watching this channel for a while or any other channels um, that are similar, you have probably been going through this process. So if you think back to yourself at the beginning of this year, ask yourself how you've changed since then and um, and what things have been going on in your life. And, you know, honestly, it could have been one of the toughest years of your life because you're probably shedding a lot of things that are no longer serving you. And that is the point of this year. That's taking away a lot of the low vibrational energies that um, we've carried from other timelines, other times, and that we might be carrying from past lives or from our family lines or even for our society or for the universe itself. So we're still working on shedding a lot of that stuff and it's a big job. That's why it's like not just a one and done. So um, we're still going through that and I want to get a read on what we as a collective need to work on for this, um, this installation of the Ascension show, I guess. I don't know, whatever, I shouldn't make light of it, but you'd cry if you didn't laugh. Anyway, all right, just a couple more shuffles. All right, here we go. Okay. All right. So we're starting out with the Queen of Wands, and this is our overall energy right now, which makes a lot of sense. The Queen of Wands is um, a creative force. She's also um, a master of, well, not really, I guess the king would be more of a master, but she um, is very, um, very adept at attracting whatever it is into her life that she needs. So we're talking about the law of attraction and positive manifestation. Um, she can also use that energy for, um, for not so good things like manipulation, etc. But we're really talking about um, the best possible um, manifestation of somebody with that kind of creative power. She is able to create her own reality, and right now we're being asked to do that. Um, and I'm looking at this black cat here, and it's almost like, not that kitties aren't amazing, but it's almost like this is the shadow self ready to be um, released, ready to be um, 
illuminated for the animal that it is. And that's not to say anything negative about cats. They're amazing. I don't have cats, but I'm sure some of you do. Um, but that's just kind of the intuitive uh, guidance I got on that. She is looking towards the future. She's now determined. Here we are. We're, we're determined to be successful. We're re determined to um, align our vibrations so that we have unified both uh, all the polarities really inside us, both the masculine and the feminine polarities and every, all the others as well, which we've come into this um, existence with. She um, she's not taking no for an answer. Like she has it under control and that's kind of um, uh, the overriding energy for right now. Your energy right now is specifically um, working together to build this sort of cathedral, working together toward the spiritual mission, which we're all on. And she's also very spiritual. So it's kind of like these are really similar. Um, this one is kind of the community aspect though. So we're looking at um, how we're affecting each other in our um, collective ascension and the work that we're putting in in making this just perfect. I mean, a cathedral is built to the uh, millimeter and it's very precise and it, it involves all kinds of sacred geometry, all, all of um, uh, lots of perfect proportions and things like that. So we're talking about really tapping into um, the perfection of the creation that we are as human beings and as souls and continuing to um, perfect that even more by releasing um, things that are not in alignment with this kind of uh, perfection. And we're going through that as an entire community. It's not just a few of us. It's not just people who are light workers or, um, you know, spiritual people or whatever. Everyone is um, starting to go through this. It's just a matter of are you conscious of it or not? And um, whether we like it or not, we're all being brought through this and we're kind of being brought to this reckoning. And I'm seeing this um, trinity here. And to me, that's kind of like, um, it's kind of like a reckoning. In the recent past, we've all been through this massive transformation. This is a massive transformation, a death of a part of yourself or a part of your life, but it's not a, a negative. It actually is um, a positive. You can see the sun coming up in the distance and um, it is like the the new coming in. So like I said, we've had to make a lot of space for the old to leave and the new to come in. And this is one of those unstoppable forces. Like you're not going to stop this. It's a matter of, are you going to do it willingly or are you going to be forced? And that's because um, while we have free will, we absolutely are um, uh, destined to, um, live our best, you know, best lives. And we're being put in a position, I mean, we should be grateful to be put in the position to, um, to go through the energetic changes in the universe that put us uh, in the position to be there. So barely making sense, I apologize. Um, this has put us in a position so that in the present, we're actually the high priestess. So this has opened us up to our um, intuition a lot more. And this comes in with the balance of the masculine and the feminine. Um, you can see the black and the white here. I always sort of think of that as that balance. Um, and she is that 
strongest intuition. And if you are um, following this, then you're on the right path. If you're fighting it, you're going to find yourself um, facing some kind of justice. And oh, interestingly, then in the future, we have the King of Swords and he is going to bring the, the truth. He's going to bring the justice and he's going to do it in a way that is um, not um, necessarily harsh, but it's not going to be overly touchy feely either. So we're being asked right now to make the transition to follow your um, intuition, to look inwards that everything you need to move forward right now is inside. It's you're not going to find it from another person or um, in your community or anywhere else is like the it's the reflection, the inner reflection right now that's going to bring you um, to the truth that you need of what uh, what needs to be released in order to um, in order to reach this victory, which is our final card. Um, the six of wands, which usually equals um, a victory and some kind of recognition. And the recognition would be from yourself, the way that you have been able to overcome all the obstacles put in your path, the obstacles being your karma, your um, uh, your society, all of the things you've had to overcome to get where you are. This is really an internal struggle for everybody. It might manifest itself externally, um, as in the people that you're uh, in contact with or the people in your life who you realize need to be released, um, jobs that need to be released, uh, home situations where you need to move, uh, move out of. Um, but it really is an internal uh, it's an inside job. <laughs> it's the words I was hearing. It's an inside job. Um, so you need to do that work inside to discover this truth. If you are not discovering this truth on your own, you're not following your own path, then it's going to be done for you by the universe in order to move everyone forward. No one is escaping this. Just like no one escapes death, no one's escaping this. And I don't mean to sound so ominous. This is really a good thing. This is what we were always meant to do. Um, it's kind of the equivalent of like a resurrection for all of us. Um, as fanatical as that might sound, it's really a time of humanity. I mean, we've switched out of the age of Pisces into the age of Aquarius. And um, the way that humanity exists and interacts with itself is changing. And it's changing for the better so that um, we're all on a higher vibrational level. We're moving out of the third dimension all the way eventually into the fifth dimension via the fourth dimension. And um, it means that a lot of the things in the third dimension are going to be left behind. The third dimension is dying off. Nothing's going to like necessarily like your life is not necessarily hugely going to change. It's like your life's not going to, you're not going to go to another place or something like that, or be sucked out of your house. Or I don't even know what people um, are afraid of, but it's just that your reality is hopping to a new timeline. It's a new um, higher vibrating timeline where things are not as heavy. They don't move as slowly. They are not um, negative energies don't like to be there. So you're not going to be able to a take those negative people and things and whatever with you and B they're not going to affect you or be around you in the same way that they have been able to be. Um, and that's the reality. It's already been happening. So if you look back on this year and you, um, can think of where you were in January, where you are now, it might have been one of the toughest years of your life because you might be shedding a lot of that negativity, a lot of those relationships and people and things and jobs and um, home environments that are not serving you anymore, but it's all in order to reach that higher vibration. So it looks like um, this is going to be a big one as far as that's concerned because you've got these really serious major arcana um, that are talking all about um, 
the shedding of the old and the breaking out of the old and following your um, deepest inner guidance and unifying those polar opposites and um, really embodying the high priestess energy. And then winning because of it. So let me get some, um, let me get some Oracle cards for us to kind of round this out. Oops, way too many. I'll take this one because it came out by itself. Oh my God. Okay. So first came out, make a commitment. And it's from the Archangel Michael Oracle. Archangel Michael, as the angel of courage and confidence, I call upon you to lend me your strength. Allow me to commit to myself, my life, and my divine purpose. Please clearly guide me so I can fully open my heart to every experience. That is so perfect for this um, because this is all about committing myself, my life, and my life to my divine purpose. Um, this is bringing you in alignment with your divine purpose. This is helping you clear the karma and clear the baggage so that you can um, step into your divine purpose. So you're going to want to commit to it. And it's not only committing to your purpose, but it's committing to yourself. It's making the choice that you're going to live in joy. And joy is the high. Oh, here. It says it right here. Joy is the highest energy of all. It's the magical sense that everything is possible. And joy springs from appreciating the gifts within each moment. Joy allows you to attract and create your present and your future moments at their highest possible levels, which is exactly what we're going for. That's what she does. So we're in that space to an extent, but we really need to bring in the joy and we need to channel that higher vibration in order to help those around us as well. So it's kind of a, this is a community shift. And um, the more that we can bring in the joy, the more we'll bring that into our lives and also bring others that we care about along with us. And lastly, um, Oceana. Take action. You're in touch with your truth in the situation and you need to trust your gut and lovingly assert yourself. So that kind of goes along with the King of Swords, who is his truth. He is going to bring you the truth, um, whether you like it or not. So this is you being in touch with that truth, knowing what it is, not hiding from it and um, making a commitment to yourself to... Um, to live by that truth and to speak it and to live in alignment with your divine purpose so that um, you can begin to bring forward all of the gifts that you're um, here to give as we move the entire collective forward in their ascension. Okay, um, I hope that this was helpful and I would like to hear your comments if this resonated and how you do for the eclipse on the 27th. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.